very distinguished alumna, alumnus of our uh, school, as well as the a professor and president of Ming Chuan University, and that is Dr. Chuan Lee. Uh, Dr. Lee is a 1986 uh, PhD graduate of, of what was Rossier then, but of the School of Education. <laughs> and we are indeed fortunate that his major professor, Dr. Clyde Brown, has come back to, uh, to kind of critique his uh, <laughs> uh, 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 presentation. And Clyde, we're delighted that you could join us today. Uh, Dr. Lee got his PhD in higher ed administration here in 1986. He also has a bit of a Renaissance uh, man. He, his undergraduate degree is in English literature, and he received a master's in management sciences from SUNY Binghamton. Uh, he's been held faculty appointments at uh, Chinese Culture University, Tam Kang University, and he was a visiting lecturer at Oxford. In addition, he has also worked at Westinghouse. And he's published numerous scholarly uh, articles and books uh, in management sciences and uh, higher ed administration. He also serves on many boards, including the Republic of China's Journalism Oversight Committee, the uh, Chinese Culture Promotion Association, and the People to People Organization in uh, the Republic of China. His wife, as uh, a coming in, and that she is Dr. Pai Dai Shen, who is the director of teacher education, the Teacher Education Center, and a professor in the Graduate School of Education at Ming Chuan. Her primary interests are e-learning, knowledge management, and um, management information systems. I know that we are going to uh, very much enjoy the remarks that Dr. Lee gives about the remarkable history of Min Chuan University. I think that I, I had the privilege to visit uh, Min Chuan last March, and I believe that um, Dr. Sample and Dr. Lee have uh, both had remarkable vision uh, in terms of what they wanted for their university. So if I could ask uh, for, uh, President Lee to come up here, please. Thank you. Now, be before he begins, um, I think uh, you all know that uh, Dr. Lee is our first inaugural holder of the uh, Dean's Distinguished Global Scholar designation. Uh, this is something that, we, uh, that uh, the School of Education and a prize have uh, begun, and we're delighted that you are the inaugural holder. Wow, thank you, thank you very much. And we're going to get a picture here. That's a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Thank, you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gallagher. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, my major professor, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is really is, uh, my great honor to come back here, especially this campus. It's more beautiful than before, and many new buildings here. I never saw that before. So I think USC is a progress very, very quickly. So today I don't want to say too many things. I just want to show you your presentation first. And then after you see the whole things, you have questions you can ask me. But I cannot answer. My major professor will answer that for me. <laughs> OK, <laughs> okay thank you. Okay. Minchuan was founded in 53 years ago as a college of commerce for girls. At that time, founder Pao was 50 years old. She was born during the year of the last emperor of the Manchu or Qing dynasty. She was one of a, a few people to live across the 20th century to the 21st century. She passed away last year at uh, 103 years old, she knew Taiwan is surrounded by the ocean. The only way to survive is through international trade. For international trade, the most important language is the international language, English. The important tool for international trade is typing commercial documentations. So she set up a College of Commerce for Girls. 
The reason for a college for girls is because she thinks half the national manpower is female. If we can promote them to work, it can build up the national strength. So, 53 years ago, she established a girls' college for commerce that emphasized three important components in its curriculum. First, commerce. Second, typing skills. Third, international language, English. The first year, she recruited only 300 freshmen. For a woman born in an age of tradition, a dream to help build the nation and educate the people was not only beyond imagination, it could be called an impossible dream. However, Founder Pao not only saw her dream come true, but she achieved it with an extraordinary way. The year of her graduation from university, she returned to Sichuan to work eventually serving as principal of two schools there. Her philosophy for running a school has always been to treat the students as your own children, attend to everything personally, and treat the school as your home. She later applied this uh, philosophy at Ming Chuan University, making it one of the hallmarks of the institution. In 1957, the funding of the school was faced with the difficulties of applying for permission, setting up programs of study, borrowing money, and so on, none of them without complications. However, Dr. Pao exerted a matched effort and pushed through obstacle after obstacle to achieve her goal. From the founding of Ming Chuan, Founder Pao always held high the banner of strict management and disciplined teaching, applying every way from a motivation of caring for students. Faculty members have always been asked to not only teach professional knowledge, but also how to be a good person, so that each student can model their lives after their teachers. All her life, she played six important roles. I'd like to tell you more about them as following. First, daughter, when she was 12 years old, she left her parents to join her uncle family in Beijing, the capital city of China, to study from elementary school to National Beijing University. Second, wife. She met my father in Beijing University. At that time, my father was a graduate student, and she was an undergraduate student. They fell in love and got married. She gave birth to four children, three boys and one girl. I am the youngest in my family. When she came home, she was always still in front of my father. Her silence was gold. Third, mother. She was the best mother. We got her attention no matter how busy she was. When she arrived home, she always played a good mother role. She also asked the housemates to take care of her children very well. She was very talented at cooking and uh, sometimes made very delicious foods for us. She never showed she was a very successful high-level officer or respected educator at home. Fourth, stateswoman. She was the first congresswoman to constitute the Chinese constitution. She proposed an amendment to the constitution, the first law to protect women's rights in every political election, at least 20% female candidates have to be selected. Fifth, banker. She worked for Central Trust Bank as deputy manager to set up the first venturing hospital to take care of venturings. Sixth, educator. She established Ming Chuan from junior college. 
to senior college to comprehensive university. This achievement was recognized by UNESCO, which honored her as the most distinguished female educator in Asia. Now we intend to make Mingchuan to become the first American university in Asia. Mingchuan University pays our respect for her. She is called the eternal President Pao. We follow her steps to march Mingchuan into the future. President Pao, the only reason I show this is because uh, on our uh, 50th anniversary of Mingchuan University, and Dr. Ganagar joined us. And at that time, my mother, President Pao, was 100 years old. And uh, she still can make a speech and uh, talk to people. Uh, so I think it is uh, Ming Chuan's history, just like uh, her whole life. So it's, uh, we really uh, uh, think that she, she is uh, one of the most important person uh, in Ming Chuan history. Any question you, you want to ask? Yes. Uh, tell everyone some of the demographics of Ming Chuan. How many programs? How many students? The the, the breadth of the, the programming that's at Ming Chuan. Okay. So Ming Chuan is uh, we start from the uh, uh, three hundred students. At that time, we are junior college. So, uh, uh, Ming Chuan uh, College of Commerce for girls, only three hundred students. Now we become the Ming Chuan University. We have uh, 18,000 students. OK, so we, well, compared with USC, we are small potato. Yeah. <laughs> you have uh, uh, 39,000 uh, students. But uh, anyway, Ming Chuan, is, uh, we uh, uh, grown up very quickly, because it's, uh, uh, we, we have uh, uh, 10 schools. Uh, we, we have a. Uh, uh, 37 departments and 22 uh, graduate school. So it's, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, many, many things that are very distinguished with uh, other universities in, in Taiwan. Especially we, the, we are number one in international education. So we have uh, uh, over 600 uh, foreign students, international students from over six, uh, 64, 68 countries. So com uh, compared with USC, uh, you are 12 or 14 times bigger than us. But uh, anyway, you are giant. We are small men. Okay, we'll go up. You know, <laughs> soon later, we'll be, become a uh, giant. But, uh, but anyway, this uh, Ming Chuan is uh, we uh, trying to become uh, American University in Asia. So this, uh, we pass the, the final uh, stage uh, self-study assessment. So in November, uh, if they are long, will be uh, the first American University in Asia. So this is uh, my dream. Uh, 15 years ago, I already uh, processed this whole thing. The, but this is a uh, uh, even past this uh, 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 self-study uh, assessment, take me uh, 2,000 days to pass the whole things. Oh, so this is uh, not so easy, but this, uh, I'm glad. You know, I, I spent uh, 2,000 days, but finally I can become uh, American University in Asia. I think this is, uh, USC gave me this uh, power potential. Let me finish my drink can control. So that, that, that's something I want to tell you. And it's with the, uh, you know, we're all going through WASC accreditation right now. This is through the Middle States? Mi middle States uh, Commission on Higher Education. Yeah, yeah so it's, uh, uh, I think it's uh, uh, under this uh, middle, uh, MSCHE, mm -hmm. like uh, New York University, uh, Columbia University, and uh, UPenn, they all belong to that. Uh, M S C H E. That's quite an accomplishment to be the first 
Asian university with American accreditation, which means is a lot for people transferring to, uh, or, or wanting to come with a, an accredited degree from Nishuan to the U.S. Yes, and uh, I, I wanted to tell you people something about uh, my dream. Uh, Fifteen years ago, uh, I, ha I just like a modern Luther King, I have a dream. Yeah. I have a dream, but finally my dream come true. But the modern Luther King, I don't know his dream come true or not. But anyway, my dreams come true, okay? And uh, I just use some kind of different way to, to process the whole Ming Chuan University. Especially I use uh, globalization. I think it's uh, like a U uh, USC's uh, global university. I'm a global university. I changed the B to C, uh, global university. Maybe so I needed to tell you what is a global university. So when I was uh, a PhD student uh, in USC, I learned so many things from uh, my major professor, uh, Dr. Grafton. So I learned so many things about the uh, uh, American university system, and especially USC, the management system. And uh, I learned so many uh, uh, theory and concepts from the higher and post-secondary education. So this, uh, I just bring these whole things, go back to Taiwan. I localize the global knowledge, or become the a new kind of uh, knowledge, and uh, I set up uh, international college 10 years ago. I think it should be 11 years ago. International college, I just trying to uh, global my local uh, uh, knowledge it's about Ming Chuan. So this, uh, this is 604 students uh, when they graduate from Ming Chuan. They can get a job very easily in any part of the uh, uh, world. So I call that things uh, localized uh, global knowledge and globalized uh, local knowledge. This is a globalization. Uh, okay, this, uh, this is the way that I try to push Ming Chuan go forward. You know, I think uh, this is uh, something that I feel very proud of uh, Ming Chuan because it's uh, Ming Chuan now. Uh, it's really is uh, entirely different with uh, the rest of Taiwan University because it's, uh, we are a very unique way to uh, operate Ming Chuan University. <laughs> so does everybody uh, say yes to me, right? <laughs> no question is a good question. <laughs> Please. <coughs> In getting this American accreditation, uh, how do you how do you raise awareness around Taiwan and, and outside of Taiwan and Asia about what that would mean for a student? You know, I'm, I'm just wondering to what extent the student would who is uh, 17 or 18 years old would understand uh, how that differentiates Ming Chuan from other universities that they might choose. So, how do you see uh, raising awareness of that in the different student populations that you? Yeah, that's a very good question. Usually, it's, uh, the, uh, the students from all over the world, and uh, they, they want to find out that they have a communication tool. Especially, we think the uh, international uh, language should be English. So we, we have international college all taught in English. So they, the first things, they can know each other. So this, uh, we just uh, spread this uh, news to every the embassy, or uh, they can apply uh, uh, to Ming, Ming Chuan University. And uh, we have a Taiwan scholarship too, okay? So they, they can have the Taiwan scholarship. So, so I, I think it's uh, not so easy that uh, uh, the whole world know uh, Ming Chuan University. But uh, we, we start from single digits students. So we gradually uh, uh, grown up the, till right now. So, so this, uh, we have uh, 600, uh, over 600 students. So, but uh, anyway, that's uh, not so easy. But uh, anyway, uh, we 
if we become American university, then we much powerful than before. Especially, <coughs> they pay one tuition, they can get two degrees. One is a Taiwan degree, that's Ming Chuan University. The other degree, uh, from the American University in Asia, they have uh, two degrees, pay one tuition. So tuition compared with USC, the way really spending, yeah, this is not, <laughs> not can compare with USC. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, uh, we just try very hard to, to give our uh, students, uh, especially international students, the best uh, education they can get, especially they just want to know how to do business in uh, Asia or in uh, Chinese society, especially that another giant, China, they want to do business with China, and that they can learn this from our international college. Yeah, so, so we'll teach them uh, so many things, how, how to do business with China, because the Taiwanese is a very successful businessman in China. So, so if you go to China to learn, nobody going to teach you. But in Taiwan, we have so many very successful businessmen. They can teach you uh, how to do business with China or the Chinese society. Like Singapore, we recognize them just like uh, uh, Chinese society. Okay. Uh, like uh, uh, Thailand, a lot of uh, Chinese there. Korea, a lot of overseas Chinese there. So, so many places, uh, Philippines, they have so many uh, Chinese there. So, so, so that's the reason is, uh, our international students, uh, I, I think from the single digit to double digits, now it's triple digits. We grow up very quickly. Please. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's a good question too. Because uh, usually you only teach them uh, in textbook that cannot work. So we we'll, uh, send send them the, to many our our business in Taiwan, rather than internship over there. So uh, they can learn this, uh, real things in real world. So I think this uh, very quickly they can pick up the whole things. And uh, sometimes uh, we just uh, organize uh, some kind of. Uh, uh, trip to China or to, to some place and never then really know that kind of uh, situation. Yeah. Otherwise, you just tell them this uh, in textbook, uh, in classroom, they, they don't understand. Uh, I think this uh, EDD, yeah, you have a trip to, mm -hmm. to Taiwan too, right? Mm -hmm. Korea, that's good things to do it. Because it's, uh, they, it's, uh, make, you know, the EDD students, they become uh, eye-openers. And uh, they see so many different things. Uh, just like this, uh, the first time that I become a uh, USC student, I never know this. Uh, so many things is, uh, and entirely cannot imagine, especially uh, uh, your you management style. And, uh, so you, when you visit Ming Chuan, you can see this, uh, my management style is very uh, similar to USC. Uh, so, but it's, uh, that's the, the way I can learn. Yeah, because I, if I don't come here, I don't know. It's seeing is believing. That's the only way I can learn. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I have two degrees, right? One is uh, Chinese, that's a uh, uh, Ming Chuan University degree. The other is English, that's American University in Asia. So that's two degrees. Mm -hmm. One English, one Chinese. You understand? So two names. Two names. Oh. 
because it's a, actually it's a, I create American University in Asia, but it's a, we are the same, same body, but the two different things there. That, that's something uh, uh, I think in, in total uh, uh, world, we, we are only one. We have this, uh, this double features. Please. Mm -hmm. um, you talked a lot about your degree programs. What about um, study abroad or short term study? Do you have a lot of international students that come for a semester or at different levels? Do you have undergraduate students who might come for a term to study and go back to their universities? Do you have any kind of partnerships? Yeah, we have uh, some kind of exchange program. You can uh, stay in Taiwan maybe it's uh, one year or one semester. So you can learn. Uh, anything you wanted. If we have the things in international college, because if you can speak Chinese, then you can choose every to topic you want. Uh, so, so it's, uh, I, I think it's, uh, uh, it's a very good way uh, uh, for uh, American s uh, students. They can stay in China, they can get any kind of uh, uh, scholars, uh, sc scholarship in the United States can use uh, American dollars and go to Taiwan, and they, they can have a good life there. Because uh, anyways, many things are uh, not expensive than the United States. So uh, they, yes, if they have a very good uh, scholarship or grants, uh, they want to do something, and I think the Ming Chuan University can help them to do it. Any question? Where do uh, the students go when they, not in the international, but your uh, Chinese uh, students, when they graduate, what kinds of jobs do they get? Well, all kind of jobs they can get, because uh, actually uh, university, just like a, a shrinked uh, society, because uh, uh, they can go to a uh, profitable organization or non-profit uh, organization. Especially right now, this, uh, uh, Taiwanese students, uh, they can get a job in China. Because uh, uh, Taiwan, Taiwanese uh, businessmen, they like to uh, hire uh, Taiwan students. Because it's, uh, Chinese students, uh, uh, it's good. But it's, uh, sometimes the culture is different. Even we are the same race, same kind of blood, and same kind of language. But the thinking is uh, a little bit different. So this, uh, but this, uh, Taiwanese is uh, like Taiwanese. I think that's the natural way. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we, we can get a job in China too. I don't think people realize. I think if you, if, uh, um, I think a lot of people might find that unusual because you, you get the impression that the, the People's Republic of China and the Republic of China are at odds with one another about uh, being independent or being part of China. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people don't know how important a trade partner mm -hmm. you, uh, Taiwan is with China and vice versa, and that, that it does offer a lot of opportunities for Taiwanese graduates. Right. That, that's true. You said political side, uh, maybe Taiwan and China, we, we are not uh, part partner, but as a business side, we are partner. Mm -hmm. And, and this, I think it is uh, especially money. So no, no, the money is, uh, is different. All money, you, you can, even you, you uh, earn uh, so much money from China, okay, you can change that into uh, American dollar. So no difference. So there's a uh, money talk. So there's, uh, every businessman, they like that way. Mm -hmm. So if they can make money, yeah, that's the most important things. Yes. You described a great vision and, and, and accomplishments for, for Ming Chuan. Could you expand and talk about higher education policy in Taiwan in general mm -hmm. and how that might be similar or different from what your institution is uh, pursuing? <laughs> it is, uh, it's, uh, actually, it's uh, uh, Taiwan is, is, uh, the government uh, 
it's a shortage of uh, fund, just like uh, uh, United States, because your federal uh, government, you don't have money uh, to to give uh, uh, university and colleges uh, like U.S. Uh, U university uh, of California system. Uh, they they are in trouble, so you are decentralized. Uh, but uh, Taiwan, we are centralized, so that that's totally different. Centralized, so there's a. Uh, but uh, still, how come we still shortage of uh, fund, uh, business, uh, educational fund? Because we have uh, too many uh, universities and the college chasing too few students because it's a decline of birth rate. Okay, and uh, as especially we only have 23 million uh, 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 population, but uh, we have 164. Cut, cut university and college. So we, we the, you know, the, the university and the college has grown up too quickly. But it's, uh, I think the government fund cannot uh, uh, match this kind of growth. So this, uh, but this, uh, I, I think this uh, uh, educational reform uh, in Taiwan made a big Mistakes because uh, that time uh, we we have uh, uh, like uh, 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 KMT I think Kuomintang uh, the opposite uh, party uh, they they rule whole Taiwan and uh, they made uh, one very bad decision about the national uh, uh, policy uh, that's just uh, every citizen must have the chance to go and enter. University or colleges, I I don't think it, I agree with that. I think it's a uh, every uh, person that has a different way. Some you can go to uh, college or university. Some you cannot. But uh, at that time, because they want the uh, university re uh, uh, to to have so many too many universities, so so that's reason we're in trouble at that that point. <laughs> Yes. Thank you for being with us. Um, as your vision becomes a reality and, and you have this sort of dual program, do you, do you anticipate your enrollment growing greatly? Um, do, you, do you have an enrollment plan, so to speak? Do you expect to grow? Do you expect to become more popular and prestigious? Do you expect that there will be um, actually more students? You, you mentioned some of the challenges in Taiwan with, with the limited number of students. Do you expect to get more students internationally? I'm just wondering what your plans are. Yes, that that's a good question too. You know, so everybody has a very good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's a, this, I just think this. I don't want so many students. I think our student population. I don't want over twenty thousand, because it's a, if a, you have too many students, you, you cannot take care of them very well. So I just control the the quantity. I control the quality too. I wanted them to get the best quality uh, education uh, in Ming Chuan University. Do you, do you see international students as a, as a, a major source of students going forward? I mean, Taiwan does have one of the lowest birth rates in the world. And I know, for instance, that Japan, which also has one of the lowest birth rates in the world, is consolidating its number of national universities and reducing the number of slots in them. So, and as, as that demographic shift becomes more and more pronounced, do you see trying to recruit more international students or, or just take more students away from the other universities? And find <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> you know, so I think the birth rate, we are lower than uh, Japan. We are the lowest in the world. You know, cause so I don't know why our young people, they don't want to get married. They don't want to... Uh, to have children, you know, so that that's a surprise because I have four children. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but right now, this uh, uh, Taiwan is trying to uh, recruit many students from mainland China. So many students because mainland China they they like uh, Taiwan, okay, because it's, uh, we speak the same language, uh, with same race, okay. It's uh, culture is the same, uh, but it's uh, maybe. Uh, uh, for so many years uh, uh, separate. So we, we have a, 
a little bit of difference, like the gene need from from China and from Taiwan. And uh, my wife and we we three get along very well. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> because so we yeah, like Jin Li and I, we we are the same university, USC. Uh, so we thinking maybe we al already know not too much difference. So this uh, I I do think uh, right now uh, Taiwan going to recruit so many students from from China. So this uh, I think is uh, many Chinese students they don't want to go Korea or Japan. They they all this uh, international student going to. Uh, uh, decline very quickly, but there's a uh, one thing is uh, many people think it's okay. You just recruit a lot of uh, uh, Chinese students uh, to to your university, but uh, I don't think I have so many room for that because it's, uh, you, uh, our international students you must uh, have a lot of room, as, as especially a uh, dormitory for them. So we don't have so many uh, dormitories, so I cannot increase uh, Chinese students' uh, the total number very quickly. So I only can have uh, maybe limited amount. So this is now I try to build a new uh, dormitory. How I can't, because there's uh, so many international students want to go into this my university, but this is, uh, I cannot accept them right away. So I just you use the, the quality control. Uh, you, we, I use the quality control quantity. Uh, so, so right now, this, uh, uh, I don't want to increase uh, international students too quickly. And uh, but uh, I going to accept the Chinese students. Uh, so this, uh, I I think this is the way. I don't have uh, any problem to accept the uh, students because uh, I have uh, like this year, many many university uh, in. Taiwan, they short of students. I have a 97, uh, over 97 percent accept rate uh, and and mid rate, and they 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 always uh, register uh, and final numbers 97.31. So so I think it's a, we we don't have problem. So I just uh, trying to control uh, the total students uh, population. The only reason. I want the quality because it's, I don't want too many students. Uh, so, so th this is the way I I manage the Ming Chuan. Please. With that being said, is your enrollment in terms of the enrollment process is it accelerated? Do you have a lot of students interested in applying to the institution? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you know, so one thing is uh, I I want to tell you is uh, because it's a uh, our enrollment is a uh, government control our, our enrollment. Yeah, they say they don't give you so easily. So this uh, everybody ha has quota. So this uh, uh, if you have this ability to recruit students, they give you uh, maybe it's, uh, uh, you, um, maybe increase your quota. So this uh, uh, and uh, every students we go into this our university. They they must uh, join the uh, uh, join the entrance as examination uh, pass the the uh, examination they can get in, uh, so so it's not so easy. Do um, Taiwanese students get uh, scholarships from the government, and and they can use them in a private university like yours? Yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, Actually, our international students, uh, one third, uh, they get a uh, government uh, scholarship to enter our university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this uh, I'm the only university. I, I, I don't have a free lunch. Yeah, so everybody must pay for. But but some some of university they just trying to recruit the international students. Uh, they they give them a lot of uh, scholarship. Uh, uh, they just want them to. Uh, to go to their university and uh, increase their international uh, students' number, but I don't think that's right. So, I, I just want a uh, student. Uh, if they enter your, your your university, must pay for that, and they they study very hard, and, uh, and when they enter our university, and uh, they can apply scholarship 
if they, they, they have a good uh, score, average maybe three or over three point uh, three or something that they can get it. Is there in in, in terms of uh, entrance exams like China? I know has an entrance exam. And mm -hmm. How you score in that is depends on what university you can you can go to. Is Taiwan's K twelve system the same way that there is a a national exam that all high school students take and that determines where they will go? Well, we now we only have uh, nine years compulsory education. Okay, we we going to extend it to twelve years. So compulsory education, you you don't need a uh, uh, pass uh, examination or something. It's just like an uh, American system, no difference. Okay, so they graduate from high school. Uh -huh. as what, what whatever they did as a student in high school, their their grade point average and so on. That's what you look at. That's a, uh, maybe it's uh, you, uh, usually it's uh, you uh, after you graduate from high school you must uh, join entrance examination. Okay. Yeah, because we we just uh, if in the future we we uh, reach to uh, twelve years so then then maybe it's a difference. No, no, no. It's a national, national. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, it's, uh, our uh, educational system is very similar to American university system. Okay. So because it's, uh, we follow your way or benchmark is um, American way. Yeah. So, so not not too much difference. And uh, before the China, they follow Russian. Uh, Educational system or British education system. Now they give up that. They they think the American uh, system is the best. So right now they they change. They change very quickly. You know, this ch China. This uh, uh, the the uh, Ministry of Education uh, give an order, then everybody change. So, so overnight change the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Is my faculty? Yeah, my faculty is. Uh, I think most of my faculty is from uh, uh, United States. Yeah, because we, uh, because it is our international college. Uh, we 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 need uh, our uh, faculty can speak English. So this uh, that that is uh, something that uh, we are different because uh, we are our all this uh, uh, international teachers rate is we are number one in Taiwan. So we, we have so many uh, 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 foreign teacher or international teachers over there. So that's 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 reason the uh, I I trying to do the uh, globalization because uh, I need uh, so many uh, uh, foreign uh, teachers to teach uh, our students because they they have their global knowledge and uh, they teach our students and we have our local. Uh, uh, Teachers, they they have a, a localization is uh, knowledge, uh, local uh, knowledge to to teach our students. So, so our international students always uh, uh, they they can get uh, both side. So it's, uh, so really uh, they're thinking and uh, are different with uh, uh, most of the students uh, because it's, uh, they they really uh, uh, very. Uh, Innovative thinking because it's, uh, they see their own system and uh, uh, Chinese system. They compare. Then maybe they have a new way to do their old system. That's uh, innovative thinking. So that's very good because I. So that's reason is uh, I. I join <laughs> USC. Then I have uh, innovative thinking. So when I go go home, then I I re, re uh, engineer. Uh, Reshape is always my educational system. So that's that's I, I do think the global university is very important, especially is uh, we need to find a good global university like USC. Then you can learn something. If bad, maybe that's that's uh, you. If you don't learn, it's okay. You learn that's the worst things you can get. You know. So I have a question. Uh, 
So it sounds like uh, we have uh, graduates from our doctoral programs that are interested in teaching overseas in a university, then then Chuan and other Taiwanese universities might be, they'd be interested in hiring um, graduates? Well, so I think the best place <laughs> is Minchuan International College, okay? Because, <laughs> because uh, we are, we are in, in our international college, uh, uh, we all speak English, okay? But the rest of uh, they, they claim they are international college, but too many uh, local students, finally they speak Chinese, yeah. So, but uh, we are only university, we cannot speak Chinese to our international students because they don't understand, yeah. Even we have local students, but still, still so many is, uh, uh, international students, uh, they don't have chance to speak Chinese. <laughs> I, um, when I was uh, in uh, at Minchuan last March, um, I had an opportunity to uh, go to something they said to me was a cheerleading, or I was going to go and watch a cheerleading um, contest. And I, I, as, when I say that to all of you, you, I know you're thinking cheerleaders we have at football and you know that. Um, this is something that President Lee initiated to, uh, for freshmen. Mm -hmm. That was uh, is a team building. Uh, every incoming group of freshmen, by their departments, uh, have to have to write, produce, and uh, um, perform a. Is it five minutes? Three minutes? Uh, three to five minute um, cheer. About something, they have to have a theme. Uh, everybody has to participate. And so, when he was telling me I was going to watch a cheerleading, it was <laughs> about developing this notion of, of promoting some uh, something. They all, I mean, it wasn't my idea of a cheerleading contest. So, <laughs> when you walk, in, when we walk into an auditorium, I mean, into a coliseum like the uh, like Gala, filled with people, all the parents. Uh, the, the students who have done this before, they come in and these students, whether there were 12 in a department or there are 70, every single one of them has to work on this production. They're all in costumes, there's music, they have to have sets, and you're down on the floor of a basketball arena. So, um, you, um, so that, I mean, I'm, I'm not doing it justice. I have photos because I, I, I really was very impressed with what the students did, their creativity, but also that you have to learn, it doesn't matter that you might not want to choose those other 12 people that are in your major, you got to work with them. So it's a, an example of learning how to accomplish something with the people you have in your group. And you want to talk a little bit about, you know, wh why did you decide to do something like that? Yes, because in the United States, you don't think that is a uh, mission possible. Because uh, to us, still is mission impossible. Because as uh, freshmen, the first year they join Ming Chuan, we we going to organize them uh, to to have a team, uh, the chair leaders team. So they they in, in the first year, uh, sophomore or uh, junior, uh, senior. Uh, students, they all help freshmen because this is a kind of uh, honor uh, they, they want to protect. If, uh, so they, they uh, hire a coach uh, to teach them how to dance. And uh, they trying to find a writer to write, write a story for, for this team. So this, uh, I think this, uh, they spend maybe two or three months uh, they, uh, they train themselves, and uh, and uh, they usually they don't let you watch what what they are doing. Uh, they have top secret. They don't let you know, you know. And uh, some of the team that they send the spies to know the wh what you are doing. Yeah. So so it's a very interesting the way to to build up uh, the uh, team uh, spirit. Uh, so it's, uh, so after that, the f uh, the freshman to become sophomore. Then they know everybody uh, in, in maybe that uh, department, or they know everybody. 
So after they graduate from uh, our university, so you, you they 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 are this uh, uh, outside. Uh, if you, you can find the same departments, uh, alumni, then help you just like their own uh, brother or sister. So so that's reason is well easy easy to get a job because they already like a family, uh, they family members. They want to help you, yeah. So because they help you just like help themselves, uh, so. That's very interesting, yeah. Because so we that, this is our tradition, just like children. Okay, they, you know, we we have our tradition too, yeah. But as a Ming Chuan, as a child leading, uh, that's that's is our our children for Ming Chuan, yeah. I will tell you, I was there when I watched the uh, the dean of the uh, a program that won, which was the second year in a row. I you would have thought. They had just won the national championship. <laughs> <laughs> he was so excited for his group. <laughs> Year two to win, win again. So um, it, it, it's a team building and a, and a collaborative feeling. And, a, and this, I really like a Trojan family feeling for the faculty and the, and the administrators, too. Mm -hmm. I think there's one last question. Mm -hmm. Well, that was just a comment because that example uh, exemplifies um, the work environment, the team building practice that you have. Because often when you are in a work environment, you are forced to work with people that you don't know. You have to figure out their work, um, what their powers are as a team, what they possess. So I think that that's a good um, team thing to have there because it initiates the student to have to work with other people. So once they leave your university, they're not afraid of those challenges of working with people that they don't know because they've already had that experience. So I think that's good. That's good comments. Yeah, I really agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to let that be the last time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.